In this video, we're going to look at something called the newton raphson method in order to generate the roots of a simple polynomial equation. Now, the polynomial equation we're going to start off with is this one here. So this is y is equal to x squared minus 2. So you can see it's y is equal to x squared, and then we subtract 2, so we drop it down in the uh, y-axis so that the crossover point here is going to be 0 minus 2. Now, whenever we find the roots of this equation, well, they're going to be the points where it crosses the x-axis. That's what we mean by the roots. So the value we should be getting is 1.414 and minus 1.414. Now, we will only look at the positive value which is 1.414. So when we run through the simulation, we should get this final value here. Now this is actually the square root of 2. So you can see that if we had x squared minus 2 equals 0, we would have x squared is equal to 2, x would equal plus or minus the root of 2, and we take only the positive value, therefore we get x is equal to plus the root of 2. Now the newton raphson method is quite straightforward. We take an initial guess. So the initial guess that we're going to take is the value of 2. So if we were to pick the point here on the function, we would go along 2, and at this point here, we would go up to that point here, which is 2. And what we do is we draw in the tangent at that point, so if we were to move this round about, you can see that that point moves the tangent round about the function. And we've seen that in a previous video. So we'll put that back to a value of 2. And you can see that from that point 2, we draw the tangent. And the tangent comes down to this point here. So this point here is a new point in our x-axis. And we can see here that this point here is going to be the value of 1.5 and in fact I've got it down here so the initial value is 2 the next value is going to be 1.5 so what we do is we note the value of this f of 1.5 which is up here and then we rem remove the function here the point here down to this new position so if we were to move it to the new position, we would have it at 1.5. So this has moved it to the new position. And again, we do the same again. We draw the tangent at that point, And then we see where it crosses the x-axis. And that's our new value for our um, input. In this instance here, you can see it's at the point 1.4167. So already we're getting close after just a couple of iterations. So we continue doing this. I'll do this for this one more iteration. So the value is 1.4167. And you can see that we're getting closer and closer to the actual root, which is 1.414. So within two or three iterations, we've actually got to the root of this equation. And you can see here that we've got the AI in this instance becomes the previous value, which is 1.4167, and the next value is 1.414. So we get through this same this continuous process over a few iterations in order to generate an approximation to the root of this function. Now, we can look at this in terms of the mathematics and have the mathematics here. So let's take our time to talk our way through this. And we'll try and keep the, the drawing here as well. I'll put that back to a value of, say, 1.5. Uh, in fact, a value of 2, you can probably see it better. Um, 2. So we know that the equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. So in this instance here, m is the gradient. So what is the gradient of this pink line? Well, the gradient is just simply the rate of change of the function 
at that point and if we can give all that point AI. So it's just the F derivative of AI and we've seen that we're able to generate this F derivative of AI numerically from the previous video. So we've got that times X plus C but we actually want to generate this line and we want the line centered at that point AI F of AI. So what we can do is we can multiply, we can take the function here, which is a, a function of x, and then we have to shift it to the right. So when we shift it to the right, we generate x minus ai. So x minus ai will shift it to the right by a value of ai. So that's going to make sure it's in the correct um, x position. Now, in order to get the correct y position, we simply have to add up or move up the axis by the factor of f of ai, which is just this height here. So that's going to give us the equation of this line. Now, all we need to do now is to note that whenever the value here of y is equal to zero, that's when we get the roots. So we can simply set this value here y as the value of zero and we transpose the equation till we get this here and then we can solve for the value of x. So we then transpose the equation again such that we get x is equal to ai minus f of ai upon f derivative of ai. Now this new value of x we can call it ai plus one. So that's the new value. So this is the final little uh, newton raphson equation that we use in order to generate this approximation to the roots of our simple polynomial. Now we're going to take this example here of using x squared minus 2 and we will code it in, in our assembly language and we'll see it running. So let's go and we will do that now. Now I have generated the code here for our newton raphson approximation using a simple polynomial. So our polynomial is x squared minus 2. So we expect to get the answer 1.414. So the answer 1.414 in our fixed point is 0 cross 0 0169. So again, we can break it down into little sections. I've written the algorithm up here. So we've got to generate the f derivative of our value ai. Now our values are actually here at the bottom. Okay, so all of our constant terms are at the bottom here. So we've seen how we could generate the derivative of a value from the last video. And all I did was I took the, the last video and, and I took the code for the last video and I generated an actual subroutine for that code. So that subroutine is in the ROM. So it means that we can just call that subroutine whenever we want to. So that's what we've got here. We're just going in and we're pushing the values that we require in order to generate the derivative of this function here at a point whenever the value of x is equal to 2. So this is the uh, value, this is what we get here for our uh, derivative. And then we want to generate the actual value of the function f of ai, and we do that using our power function. So we generate that here, and then we do the division here, and then we do the subtraction of ai minus this value in this section here. And we're going to go round this a certain number of times. So we have to decide um, whenever the value that we've got um, is close enough to the root. Now, a simple way of doing that for us at the moment is just to pick a number of iterations. So we'll just stick to five iterations of this particular um, loop. So that's the code for generating the uh, newton raphson for the x squared minus 2 and we expect to see 
the result uh, 0 cross 0 169. So let's load this into our machine and see whether we actually get this result. Now I have loaded the program into the RAM and it's now running. So again if I drop down you can see the RAM and the ROM being accessed. And we have the control unit with all the sets and enables pulsing, which is generated by the microcoded ROM. So I will leave this to run and I'll fast forward the video and we'll get to the final result. Now that's the simulation finished and we've got the final result in register R3. Now we were expecting to see 0169, but we've got 01. 6b but from the 9 to the b we only go from 9 so it's 10 and then a and then b so we're only three in effect units out so this is really um, quite accurate and the actual value then 016b is approximately 1.418 as opposed to 414 so let's have a look at this actually within the graphical calculator. I have added the simulation result here in yellow. So if we zoom in, we can see that the result that we expected to get is 1.414. And the actual result we got from our simulation on our CPU is 1.418. So you can see that we are actually within the um, correct range that we expect to get with our fixed point 8.8 .8 number system. So it's only going to be accurate to approximately two decimal places and we see this accuracy here. So now we're able to generate the roots of simple polynomials, but we're not really going to be using it in order to do that, we're going to use this in order to generate the square roots of numbers. So we've seen here in this example, if we had the equation uh, x squared uh, minus 2 is equal to 0, then we can use that along with the newton raphson method in order to generate that number, which is the square root of 2. But there is an easier way of doing this and we will show this in the next video, and it's really quite cool. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.